Greetings ladies and gentlefish and welcome to another tank review. This time we are looking at the tier 7 German tank destroyer, the infamous Jagdpanther. Um, little bit of a historical rundown for you as ever. What is the Jagdpanther? This is not going to come as any great surprise. It's a panther with a dirty great big gun poking out the front. And that's basically it. Um, the Jagdpanther was employed by the Wehrmacht and it's one of those tank destroyers that well, they all were made with a very similar aim in mind. You take the hull of an existing tank, you slice the turret off, you cut a hole in the front of the superstructure, and you shove a bigger gun in it. There we go. The Panther, of course, used an eight, uh, sorry, a 75mm gun. The Jag Panther was an 88mm gun. Bigger gun. Voila. And thus you have a new assault gun. That you can use to go and do whatever it is you're going to do. It was a nice way to get the long 88 used on the Tiger 2 into um, a combat situation. A nice, easy way. Remember that the long 88 gun the Tiger 2 had and that the Jagdpanther used was a more powerful gun than the L56 88mm gun being used by the Tiger 1. So this was a firepower upgrade over the Tiger 1 without having to go through the expense of making a whole new tank. And it was pretty effective um, in its role as far as I'm aware. You still had the frontal armour of a panther which would make Shermans and T-34s cry tears of pure condensed rage. So um, in, in that sense as far as I'm aware it was uh, effective at the role it was intended to perform. So what do we have in the game then. Well this thing sits at tier 7 and it's very much kind of the archetypal tank destroyer at tier 7. It's the one generally speaking to which um, the others are all compared to judge whether it's any good or not. So let's just have a quick look at the grind before we look at the Panther in too much detail. So this tank lies on the original German tank destroyer line up here. This is not the Nashorn and all that jazz. This is the original German TD line. Now you actually have two different ways to access this tech line. Obviously you start off at the Leich tractor, you then go to the Panzer Jäger 1, this is the German tank destroyers after all, then the Marder 2 at tier 3 and then you can either go through the Hetzer and up and around or go through the Marder 38T and then the Stug 3B. Now just a quick note on these they're all good machines, but the only reason you're going to choose to go through the Marder and the Stug 3B is if you want to unlock the other German tank destroyer line at the same time, and you don't want to have to play an additional tier 4, but then in order to get this tank line, you have to play an additional tier 4 anyway. If you're just... Honestly, I would recommend going via the Hetzer. It's far more in keeping with the rest of this line than the Marder 38T. And, well, Hetz is going to Hetz. So, I would pick that. You've then got the Stug 3G at Tier 5. Perfectly decent machine. You can either give it a 105 for the Derp or a 75mm Pew Pew. Either of them are viable options. Then you have the Mighty Flat Panzer. Both of these tanks, by the way, I believe I've got reviews of on my channel. I've certainly got the Jagdpanzer 4. A tank that gets a lot of flack, but I actually really quite like. And then, of course, you get to the Jagdpanzer at Tier 7. What modules are you going to need to unlock? Well, you'll obviously have to unlock the suspension. You never get that for free. The engine, this will depend on whether or not you've gone down the German medium tank lines. You unlock this on the 3002M at tier 6 or the 3001D at tier 6. Um, or you can unlock it at those tiers, but you don't unlock it on previous tank destroyers. So if you haven't gone down the medium tank line, you're going to have to unlock that engine. Radios, in case anyone really cares... This middle radio you'll already have. The top radio you'll probably also already have, if I'm going to be honest. They're used on bleeding everything. So, yeah, for what it's worth. Guns is a slightly different story. You've got the stock gun, which is the L70, left over from the Stug 3. And then you've got the short 88 that you can use on the Jagdpanzer 4. 145 penetration at tier 6 is okay. At tier 7 it's looking a bit ropey. Um, and unfortunately, frustratingly, you can't mount the top engine and the long 88 gun on the stock suspension. 
So you end up having to cut, use either an enhanced suspension module or unlocking the suspension before you can even start mounting the guns and the engines, if that makes sense. I think you can get away with either the gun or the top engine. Um, and in that case, I would prioritize the gun. You want at least this long 88. Because the penetration on the short 88, unless you're just going to spam APCR, the penetration really is a little bit lacking. Um, ooh, interestingly, have they buffed the APCR penetration on this gun as well? Yes, they have. Happy days. Anyway, sorry, I digress. Um, so I would prioritize getting the long 88. Once you've got the long 88, get everything else, make the tank mobile, and then get the short 105. Which of these top guns you use ends up coming down to you. So let, let's just discuss the two guns right now, just to give you an idea of what you're looking at. The long 88, this is essentially the gun from the Tiger 1. The short 105, this is essentially the gun from the VKA. Okay? So if you've played either of those tanks, you have an idea of what we're dealing with here. Long 88, 9.88 rate of fire compared to 7.32 with the 105. 203 penetration compared to 200 with the 105. But the 105 gets 244 on its prem rounds compared to 237. The penetrations are essentially the same. 240 alpha damage on the 88 compared to 320 on the 105. Combine that with the rate of fire and you actually find these two guns have very, very similar DPM values. Um, there isn't much to choose between them. So really, the DPM doesn't really make a difference. The thing that makes a difference then is the higher alpha damage on the 105. So, so far it's looking like the 105 has it. Long 88 is more accurate once fully aimed, so there's a point in favour of the Long 88, however the 105 aims faster. So, and also, something that often gets neglected, but I will mention, the 105 of course is a larger calibre gun and so gets better high explosive rounds. 420 alpha compared to 295 and 60 pain compared to 44. Personally, I would recommend the short 105, the L52 here. I think that is the gun of choice. One thing to note is that the shells, the velocity on them on the 105 isn't the best. But that is the gun that I think you should be using on the Ag Panther. I've got two marks of excellence on my Ag Panther, so I like to think I had know a little bit what I'm talking about. Um, I'd use the 105, personally. The 88 is cheaper to use and is a perfectly good grinding gun, but I would use the 105. While we're here, I'm also going to mention... You don't actually have to unlock the 105. You could go straight to unlocking the Ferdinand and or the Jagdpanther. And if you do this, then I will laugh at you. And why will I laugh at you? Because then you're going to have to unlock that 105mm gun, except you're going to have the added pain of having to do it a tier higher. And so it will take you even longer to get the top gun on the Ferdinand or the Jagdpanther 2, whichever you have decided to go with. And that's another note, from the Jagdpanther you can unlock either of these machines. It's just a matter of preference. I've unlocked them both, because I'm going to end up playing them both. But, it's up to you which one you want to go for. If you go for both of them, that's obviously even more experience you have to grind. But, just saying you can unlock them both. Um, but whichever one you do, make sure you do unlock this 105mm gun here at tier 7. It makes your life a lot easier, okay? Cool. With that said, we've had a look at the guns, so let's have a look at everything else. Survivability, 850 hit points, is not a huge amount. But, at tier 7, that is comparable to the other tier 7 tank destroyers. Unless you're looking at things like the AT-15A, that are designed as assault guns. And, and you know, they have a lot of hit points. Um, 850 is fine. 80mm of frontal armour, this is still a panther at the end of the day. Which means that you can actually get some bounces here or there. 8 degrees of gun depression, so you can use this frontal armor. You can angle it back a bit. Um, and so, like I said, you can get some bounces, which is quite nice. Don't rely too much on your side or rear armor, 50 and 40 respectively. And the gun traverse, while it's not horrendous, it's narrow enough that angling your tank is a bit awkward. But, again, this is another point in favor of the 105. If you're using the larger caliber gun, you've got that slightly longer reload time, which means you can angle your tank just a bit between shots, which can give you a slightly higher chance of bouncing. 
Mobility, 46 ton tank with a 700 horsepower engine, giving you a specific power of 15 horsepower per ton, which is perfectly respectable. It's not the fastest tier 7 tank destroyer, it's far from the slowest. Perfectly respectable. 55 km an hour top speed going forwards, 12 going backwards. That 12 going backwards is a bit sluggish and it's a bit annoying. But the 55 going forwards, whilst you're not going to be doing that most of the time, it's absolutely fine. 34.93 traverse speed is okay. Um, so nothing too surprising there. Concealment, it's not the sneakiest TD in the world. It is quite a large machine. Do bear that in mind. There are sneakier tank destroyers out there, but again, there are also less sneaky tank destroyers out there. Base view range, mm, oh dear. 350 meters. That's a bit poo. Um, they nerfed a lot of the tank destroyer view ranges. This is some time ago now, but the base view range on this thing is not very good, and that's going to influence what equipment you use on this tank. Speaking of which, let's do the equipment and the crew skills. Crew skills, I'm going to say <clears throat> you want six cents on your commander. You might want safe storage on a loader. I've appear to not have that but never mind um, beyond that bear in mind the rest of this tank line this tank line e well you get the Jag Panzer E100 at tier 10 the Jag Tiger at tier 8 the Jag Panther 2 and the Ferdinand sorry Jag Tiger at tier 9 Jag Panther and the Ferdinand at tier 8 Jag Panther at tier 7 all these machines are quite large with some armor not really very sneaky so I would prioritize repairs over camouflage personally and that's also going to translate into equipment I started off with a gun rammer binos and a camo net I then changed it you don't want optics on this thing because the view range is pretty poo and coated optics ain't gonna make much difference the aim time is good enough you don't need to worry about an enhanced gun laying drive Binos does make a substantial difference to your view range, so I do strongly recommend binos and I do recommend a gun rammer. The third slot, it used to be a camo net for me, but I then swapped that out for vents because I was finding my Yag Panther was getting into more brawls than I was otherwise expecting. Um, and that's where you really want the vents for the all round buff to your tank. So I would say binos, um, gun rammer, and vents. You might want to go camo net instead of the vents. I'll leave that up to you, but I'd recommend vents. Personally. Ammunition. Well, I've got five rounds of high explosive, though I didn't fire that much of it, but it can situationally be quite nice to have. Five rounds of APCR. You might want to go with slightly more, depending on the matchmaking and depending on the sort of tanks you're facing. Those Japanese heavies, for example, can be annoying with only 200 penetration and a lack of weak spots. And the rest, armor piercing. The ammunition isn't the cheapest in the world. Your armor piercing is just over a thousand credits for 320 alpha. If you want to swap out for the 88 millimeter gun, that is more uh, profitable. That is more efficient in terms of credits. But well, uh, I think the 105 is more effective personally. Consumables. I say this pretty much every time I've got your standard three, you could swap them out for the large versions if you wanted. You may even want to use chocolate, that's entirely up to you, or maybe even gasoline, although I probably wouldn't bother. Um, I leave that up to you, but I've gone for a cheap and cheerful setup. And with all that done, I don't think there's anything else really to be said about the Yag Panther. It's just, at tier seven, this is kind of the original, and lots of other people have tried to emulate this and copy it but I'm not quite convinced they've uh, come too close. Nonetheless, let's go and have a look at the armor and modules and some gameplay and see how this thing actually performs. Okay then, for the Yag Panther, we have got the driver over here on the right hand side as we look at it, the hull um, from the front. Radio operator over here on the left hand side. Now be a little bit wary. It says you've got the transmission down here, which counts as your uh, engine. Fine. Hits to this region. Do not set the tank on fire, though. This was something that was changed about the Germans a little while ago. So don't stress too much about that. Fuel tanks and whatnot at the rear. Nothing too surprising. Uh, commander in the side of the hull here. Big fat ammo rack. This is a Panther hull, and the Panther is notorious for getting ammo racked. So again, that shouldn't come as a massive surprise, and another reason why you don't want to angle the tank too much. Rear of the tank is made of fuel tanks and engines. 
because of course it is. From the other side of the tank, similar story, you've got a loader up here, more fuel tank and engine, and more ammo rack. Really do be careful about giving people the side profile of this tank. That is really the take home message, don't let people shoot you in the sides because ammo racks. Here we have the Yang Panther then with its armour. So at the rear on the bum we've got 40 millimetres, 40 millimetres with a bit of angling if you catch this thing from the rear you're gonna make it go splat. From the side it's 50 millimetres with a little bit of angling and don't forget those ammo racks so if you catch it from the si side, sorry apologies about that, if you catch it from the side it's gonna go splat. From the front you have got the advertised 80 millimeters of armor sloped back at around about 54 odd degrees giving you 121 effective armor lower plate not so impressive 93 effective if you use your gun depression and try and slope the um, the tank back as far as you can you'll get it a bit further than this you'll get up to about 130 140 millimeters of effective armor um, that can be fairly effective against same and lower tier tanks. Round here you also have some zones that are thicker. You've got a big fat gun mantlet which will bounce things for you which is nice. So the armour on the Ag Panther isn't too bad. It's good enough to get some bounces here or there. I mean, d don't expect to bounce things like you would in a heavily armoured tank. Um, but you can get some bounces here or there. From above it's a big target. It's 25mm thick and artillery will go ha <laughs> ha and dump on your face so that is something worth bearing in mind. Tier 7 match then on Live Oaks? Live Oaks. Um, and it's it's not too heavy a Tier 7 match either. We've got two, uh, sorry, four Tier 7s on each team and then an assortment of Tier uh, 6 and 5 tanks and our team even has a couple of Tier 4s. There's an M5A1 Stuart who at the time of this replay received funky matchmaking who's dragged an M8A1 in a fail platoon. Yes. Gotta love it when that happens. Right. Now, remembering I am still a tank destroyer even if I have a little bit of armour to work with. So I'm not just going to drive forward and try and get into the thick of the fighting. I am going to play this a bit like a tank destroyer because it is a tank destroyer at the end of the day. So we're going to go up here find ourselves a bush and there's a couple of people who appear to have gone forwards to do some spotting so we're just going to try and take advantage of that and give them some fire support trying to move back far enough hello Mr. T1 Heavy that hurt didn't it trying to move back far enough that I don't get spotted when I fire although apparently it doesn't work too well but he becomes kill number one so eh it's all good um, and then there is a guy over here, Chaffee died, KV-1S now, more tier 5s for my 105mm gun to eat. And he actually gets ammo racked, poor guy, feel so sorry for him, ah well, never mind, kill number 2. Ah, <laughs> uh, you don't see that every day. Right, who else is there over here, come on, I want things to shoot at, I'm getting bored. I'm in a tank destroyer and I don't have a particularly long attention span when doing it. I spot out the T-34, he spots out me, I hit harder, he bounces on me, he's probably regretting his life decisions at this point. Yeah, kill number three. Bounce a couple of other shots as well, so we've bounced a few shots with our armour from like tier sevens and one from a Yag Panther actually. 220 though, so I think he's using the short 88 gun. But, uh, yeah. Three kills so far with 1151 damage done. It's not very often that you get uh, three kills quite so readily, but hey, who am I to complain, eh? Who am I to complain? VK2801, A43 and IS have all last been spotted in the town itself. There may well, of course, be a KV3 somewhere. Well, there will be somewhere, but he might be over there as well. Not sure. We have a bit of a punt at the IS, but we don't judge the shot particularly well, which is a bit of a shame, but uh, never mind. A43, there you go, my son, 361, high damage roll to leave him on 76 health, and the Skoda T24 finishes him off. VK2801 now, there we go, 312 into him, 
And there's also the IS. Can we finish the VK off? Well, if he's just going to sit there, it seems rude not to. Kill number four. IS. By the way, the scoreline's well, now 12-3. So we don't seem to be in danger of losing this one. IS. Don't have a good shot on him, unfortunately. Um, so we've got the IS, KV-85, and KV-3 all somewhere. And the IS kills the Cromwell. I'm not just going to rush in there willy-nilly. I don't see any reason why I should die. Um, go on, Mr. IS. Back off. Back off. There's a good little sausage. There we go. Get a bit lucky with that shot. I didn't think that one was actually going to hit, but it does. And tracks him into the bargain. Always good for a laugh. And now we're going to move forwards. And there's the KV-3. And there's the KV-85. So we get to find all the friends at once. Yay! We've been spotted, but at this point we've kind of forgone any uh, element of sneakiness. KV-85 is getting shot up quite a bit. There's the IS and there's a Skoda T-24 to make sure I can't take the shot. But I can take that one. His shot goes into my tracks. So I'm still fine. Tracks are back on. Ooh, KV-3 now. Let's see if we can shoot the KV. Lower front plate. There we go. And we don't take a return shot either, which is very nice. Into the side of the IS. Good night, sweet prince. That's kill number five. Can we pick up a top gun? No. <laughs> ah, well, never mind. There we go. That is the game. Not a particularly long one. Um, but we were able to do a reasonable amount in that game. So let's go and have a look at the post-game stats. First class mastery, demolitionist, which is always amusing. Fighter, fire for effect, bruiser, high caliber, and tank sniper. Really, we were just farming the funds. Um, <laughs> no one put up that much of a fight, but never mind. Finished second on our team with 3,005 damage done, 5 kills, 1,080 base experience. 13 shots fired, 12 hits, 12 penetrations. 3 hits received. None of them penetrated. They were from pretty piddly guns most of the time, though, to be fair. 335 damage blocked by our armor. One enemy vehicle spotted. Seven damaged, five destroyed, and some assistance damage. With a premium account, that was a 33... Well, 34,000 credit profit. And that was all in 4 minutes 35 seconds. So, not a bad top-tier match there. Now it's time to go to the bottom of the pool and hope those tier 9s don't eat our faces. As promised then, this is a tier 9 match. If we have a look at the tier 9s the enemy have, we've got a 212A, Leopard Prototype A, WZ111-4, ML2 and an E75. Mm, yeah, we'll see how this goes. We're here on Muravanka. Home of the Magic Forest, former home to the Magic Forest. It's an encounter game, and of course we are here in our diddy little Jagdpanther. Um, yeah, now we're very much at the bottom of the feeding pool. We do have to be very careful here. That ML2, for example, can clip us. It will take him, well, on average three shots, with slightly high damage rolls, two shots. Um, yeah. We're going to try and put ourselves in a position where we are useful, though, with any luck. Time will tell how successful that is and right off the bat our MT25 just got ammo racked. Ta-ra! That's a bit of a nuisance. <coughs> okay, MT25 down. <laughs> uh, what else are we going to try? Um, now I've come over here so that I can actually get some shots on people toward the back here um, who have come over to the cap circle. I think I'll be more useful here than I would over toward the magic forest. We'll see how right I am. That's the second light tank on our team to take a bit of a slapping in the face as our 1375 loses half his health. Then most of the remainder of his health. I don't know how much longer he is for this world. Apparently not very. Scoreline is 0-2. Uh, there's a ravioli away in the distance. We have a punt at him. Take off a chunk of his health. And we seem to have done that without getting spotted, which is good, obviously. Uh, trying to get shots on people. T thirty four one. Oh, I get spotted. Okay, let's not let's not be there. Let's be somewhere else. 
And that's when I get shot in the bum by an RU-251 who has just casually driven through the forest or the center of the map or whatever. No one's challenged him. I take a hit there actually from the front which is kind of annoying. Um, yeah, we fail to penetrate the RU-251 and he's just continuing on his merry little journey. I, I don't really know why he's doing this. But it's a thing that he's doing. Scoreline 0-4 anyway, so I guess why not? Panther 2, no. T-34-1, no. MT-25, yes, no. 2-5, <laughs> this is not looking so rosy. Ah, oh, T-34-1, yeah, just, just back a little bit. Just backy, backy back. Go on! Ah, oh, bother, 2-6. Can I shoot the Panther too? Can I, heck. <laughs> this is not looking particularly good. Our tier 8s have um, flailed massively. Which is slightly problematic. Go for the shot on the MT-25. Finally, some more damage. Um, so, yeah, we're just seeing what best we can do here, really. Oh, dear. 2-8... Not sure we're going to be able to carry this in our little tier 7 tank destroyer, to be honest. But we'll do the best we can. M4A1, Revelorise, away in the distance. And there we go, we take a chunk of his health off. 312 and T alpha damage is still respectable, even when you're in a tier 9 match. It does make people pause for thought, and it does hurt you. We actually bounced that shot, not sure what from. Uh, the game settings were reset for this replay for some reason and I haven't put them all back um, so yeah I don't know what is actually shooting me I did when I played the game but I don't in the replay T-34-1 there we go sounds like it tracked him as well can we reload in time to finish this fellow off there we go we pick up a kill woohoo 510 by the way we are capping this but that doesn't actually fill me with particularly Stunning amounts of joy, I'm going to be honest. And we get spotted, and there's another bounce. The armor on this thing can actually work wonders. Remember, especially that gun mantler is quite impressive. So, Lerva. Mr. Lerva. Oh, no, no. Side of the turret? Well, yes, but that didn't end up being the side of the turret. Which is a little bit of an issue. Um, who else have we got? ML2, WZ, there's an E75 coming to join the party. It's going to be a really fun party. Um, oh dear. ML2, can we do something about the ML2 without getting magazines to death? And we're spotted again. Ugh. D54 here trying to face off against the ML2. I'm trying to help whoever I can physically actually help. But uh, not being hugely successful at the moment. Binos up. Nope, we don't spot anything. 712. It's just myself, the T 54, and the artillery. Um, RML is not very happy about this. I mean, I can't say I'm thrilled, but you know, these things happen. Uh, their ML is doing whatever MLs do. I thought that shot would actually penetrate. It wasn't supposed to be into the turret, it was supposed to be into the hull, but apparently I was wrong. So screw it, we're not going to engage the ML anymore. We're going to try and shoot the onrushing horde of lights. Take out the MT-25. We might be able to do bounce the WZ-131 and oh no, that's another WZ with a bigger gun. And we die, falling to the WZ-131 in the end. C'est la vie. That just leaves the T-54 and the bat chat 155. Yeah, that T-54 is not long for the world. And the bat chat is going to follow. And I say in chat, what's the betting I did more damage than many of the tier 9s? Well, this is entirely possible. And I'm not trying to say that I did amazingly well or anything. T-54 doesn't think so. He doesn't think that's very likely. We'll see. We'll see. Just the game seemed to be so atrocious that I wouldn't be surprised if I well, did. Well, we already knew that was a loss. Um, yeah, still got five for effect for doing more damage than we have health. And, oh. So you know that doing more damage than the tier nines thing. 
Turns out the only tier 9 I didn't do more damage than was the artillery. He did 2,176, I did 2,118. On our team, I mean. Two kills, 454 basis experience, and that was not uh, with um, any uh, premium ammunition or anything. And actually, to give credit where credit's due, that T-54 on our team did give me a message after the game and went, huh, turns out you were right, or words to that effect, and said well done. So, shout out for Bintings in his T-54 for being a good sport and a nice chap. Enemy team, well done to the WZ-131, 2.4k damage, the Lerva, 2.7k, WZ, 2.5, Leopard Prototype, 2.6, ML2, 2.2, 2.12, you know, a third of their team did more damage than the highest damaging person on our team. That kind of gives you an idea as to why it went so badly wrong. 12 shots fired, 9 hits, 7 pens for that damage count, most of which was from fairly long range. We actually managed to take 10 hits that match. 4 penetrated, 6 did not, for over 1,000 damage blocked by our armour. 4 enemy vehicles damaged, 2 of them destroyed, bit of assistance damage as well. However, 105 mil gum. The 105mm ammunition does not come cheap. With a standard account, we'd have only made 656 credits. With a premium account, it was over 10,000, but yeah, you can see the profitability coming into play there. Right, let's go and finish things off in the garage then. Overall opinion time then. The Yag Panther, I kind of like it. Um, I don't like it quite enough to keep. I'm going to be honest, but I do quite like it. It's very similar to the American T2580. You trade in a couple of degrees of gun depression and the mobility for a more accurate gun... Um, and a bit more armour, essentially. Personally, I found the Yag Panther to be a bit more fun, but that's a personal preference. Your mileage may vary. I got two marks of excellence on both of them. Um, my stats in each one aren't too massively dissimilar, I don't think. Let's have a look at my stats in the Yag Panther. I had a spate at the end where I just kept losing games, which got annoying. 53% win rate, 140 battles played. 2.12 um, damage ratio, 2.02 destruction ratio, 1,316 average damage per battle, maximum damage just over 4k, 5 destroyed max, maximum experience 1856, 2 marks of excellence currently sitting at 86.04%, 11 high calibers, 1 confederate, 3 tank snipers, 1 defender, and an invader, a nice cheeky little invader there, and uh, what is, oh, a Halonen's medal as well. Um, that's not a bad spread. Good number of high calibers, which is the sort of thing you want to see in your tank destroyers, because you should be the one doing a lot of damage. So, yeah, I did fairly well in it. I found it a reasonably fun tank. It's certainly not a painful uh, grind. Personally, tier for tier, I prefer the Flat Panzer, but I know I'm a bit odd in that regard and that many people may not. But, Yag Panther is a perfectly decent tier 7 tank destroyer. In fact, I'd argue it's probably one of the better tier 7 tank destroyers. I mean, think about some of the competition. What are you competing against? Um, you've got the Stura Emil. Well, that hasn't got a very good reputation, has it? The T25 AT is pretty decent for the Americans. And the T25 II, I actually think, is alright, even though a lot of people find the gun rather weedy. The AMX AC46. Uh, no thanks. Uh, the Brits, well, the Brits are very different. You've got the Challenger, again, not a very good reputation. And the AT7, which I hear is alright, but it's a very, very different tank. So it's hard to make a comparison. Nothing for the Chinese, nothing for the Japanese, nothing for the Czechoslovakians, and nothing for the Swedes. So I would argue this is probably up there. Either the best or one of the best uh, regular Tier 7 tank destroyers. Perfectly decent machine, and none too painful to play. So there we go. I hope you guys enjoyed that review, possibly even found it vaguely informative. If you did, by all means feel free to catch some of my other videos and or subscribe to my channel. And I wish you very happy hunting on that battlefield. Ciao, ciao.